It's barking. We're barking. It's dark. I'm ready to roll. I'm, I've never been more ready to do bark after dark in my entire life. <laughs> I'm ready to roll. It's just me and you tonight, man. No guests. No anybody else. Uh, what's up with you, man? Ah, man. Uh, not too much, dude. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, you know, good weekend. Uh, solid start to the week. Halloween tomorrow, so that's exciting. Um, that's always a lot of fun, especially down here in uh, the uh, greater North Georgia area. Uh, people come up and get a little wild, get a little crazy. So, um, you know, every day is like Halloween here, though, with some of the people who live around me. Uh, so, so what do you mean? Is is the mountain is the mountain area region of Georgia? Is the app the, the Appalachians get really fired up about a Halloween or something? Yeah, man. I mean, like it's a big deal around here. Um, you know, for a long time, and I don't. It's not the, the case anymore. Like you don't have the door to door trick or treating like you used to, but like. You know, they do the big safe zones for the kids and all the businesses go out and hand candy out and that kind of thing. So uh, it's, I think Blue Ridge is doing that tomorrow. Um, there's a bunch of Halloween parties going on in McKaysville and Copper Hill tomorrow. And so there's a lot of um, there's there's quite a bit of uh, activity around this holiday. Um, and it, it's a it's an interesting time, too, because it kind of is the kickoff for. um well, it's not the kickoff. They, we have so we have leaf season up here. I don't know, like I don't know if y'all. I mean, you probably don't do that down in in South Georgia. Uh, I can kind of guess what it is. Well, I'm sure you can. Yeah, it's like you know the, when the changes start at the high altitudes. You know, you get the beautiful colors and people flood into town. And so, like leaves change colors in South Georgia too. Well, yeah, you I get you guys have like the Swamp Gas Festival or some something. something like that. <laughs> I mean, channel, the Channel Cat, Channel Cat Festival. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Willacoochee Watermelon Crawl or whatever. Um, but uh, no, old fashioned it, day. That's what they do in Willacoochee. It's, it's a big day, uh, or it's a big, it's a big time of the year for my area for sure. Um, it, it's it's huge. In fact, um, the tourism's high. People come up. They got all these second homes up here, so people come up for Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that. And you know, I mean, everybody's from Florida and, and you know, just have a good time. With it. I'm not going to lie, man. I feel like you're gassing this up a little bit. It's a big time of year up here. It's a big time of year. For the locals, it sucks. For the locals, it's terrible, man. It's it's the worst. <laughs> like, I mean, I tried to go to Blue Ridge the other day, last Friday, to go get some lunch, man. And I, I mean, I was, in, I was in traffic for 15, 20 minutes. We, just, we <laughs> don't do it. We don't have the infrastructure to support this stuff. Yeah. Bruce is like, I, I keep something sharp on me all the time. <laughs> Some dude from Palm Beach gets a little a little sideways. I gotta gotta be gotta yeah. I keep an ice pick or a letter opener somewhere nearby at all <laughs> sure, times. Sure. Oh man. You know, the funny thing is, you know what's you know what is really taking the hell off? Trunk or treat. Oh, it's huge. Oh my god. I did. Like, listen, hold on. Now let's while we're on this subject. To me, that sucks. I miss, I wish kids still, I understand everybody's freaked out. You know, your kid might get methamphetamine in their stickers bar or something like that. But like, I miss, I miss that, man. Like when I was a kid, you know, we went around, you knocked on people's doors that you knew, you know, you, you'd go to the the houses of people you knew. And you, I, that was fun, man. That was, a good, that was a good part of being a kid. Yeah, I mean, I, I my thing was is I didn't really get a trick or treat thing because we didn't really have neighborhoods <laughs> where I grew up. You just kind of like, hey, let's just get in this car and ride twenty miles an hour to the next house. Um, uh, I remember one year we took my mom. My mom had a Dodge Colt, and uh, my brother I think was like thirteen, and she was like, my mom was like, hey, yeah, take him down the take him down the way. And my brother's like thirteen, driving my mom's Dodge Colt down a down a little. <laughs> You know, uh, dirt road. Me, uh, let's see. I was probably seven. My sister was like four. Um, God, rednecks, dude. Just absolute. You know, swamp people, rednecks. But well, I mean, I, I, I bet, I bet your thirteen-year-old brother was like smoking Winston Lights while he was <laughs> driving that cold, dude. What's your sweets? Wood tip. <laughs> yeah. Wood tip blacks. You know. Um, uh, all right, so. I'm trying to figure out if I want to go game. Let's go ahead and do it. Game let's time. Do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. We're partnering up with Game Time. If you've heard me talk about Game Time once, you've heard me talk about Game Time probably too many times because I cannot do them justice. GameTime.co, great, great, phenomenal app. I cannot say enough about this app. Blows every other app out of the water. 
Um, I'm starting to sound like Donald Trump right now, but uh, it does. It really does. Like it, it is tremendous. Uh, they do a phenomenal job. It's very quick. It's very intuitive. It's very descriptive. Um, right there, you see your Georgia Missouri tickets are all over the place. Um, cool to see that student section right there. I know you can't sell tickets on game time in the student section, but that student section is absolutely blank right there on that, which uh, which is pretty you know pretty interesting to look at. Also, the end zone as well. So uh, where the all students also sit. But uh, listen, this this thing it, you spe it specializes in and getting you tickets kind of at the last minute, but you can use it for anything. Get your tickets today. Get your tickets today for the Ole Miss game, which is a six day option with CBS. We don't re uh, we don't really know when that game is going to be played now. With you know morning, noon, night, whoever. Uh, but Game Time does a tremendous job. Uh, listen, promo code Dogs D A W G S will get you twenty dollars off of your first order. Terms apply. But that will get you twenty dollars off of your first order. And uh, listen, you can get tickets to a Georgia game, a Hawks game, a Falcons game. It doesn't matter. Anything you want, check out Game Time, and I'm betting they'll be able to get you sorted out. Uh, GameTime.co. If you don't have the app, but if you're on mobile, Game Time. Download the app. Twenty dollars off your first order with D A W G S. Now, Roos, one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight is the deep, uh, the deep south. Ride the largest <laughs> outdoor cocktail party. Okay. And we didn't want to you sound like a guy who went to the world's largest outdoor cocktail party this weekend, my friend. I had, a, and I let me listen. I threw a really, I had a really good time before the party itself. I don't know when the party actually starts. If Friday is part of the party, then I got really into the party. Um, Delta Sky Club represent. But um, I, you and I have been down to Georgia, Florida several times. Stories we, I mean, I, at least one or two stories, there's no way we could tell on the air. Um, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to wait till after the game to talk about the game because the last thing I wanted to do was like, you know, get go down a rabbit hole of eating four dozen oysters or something and then people kind of have it in their heads. This is what Jake's doing down in um, Jacksonville, even though it probably wouldn't have been too far off the truth what, no, of what yeah. I was doing. Dude, let me tell you something. Friday night, I got so hungry. Like I ate a little snack in the Delta Sky Club, like around eleven o'clock. Hungry as I've ever been, hungry and I didn't eat, hungry as I've ever been. You know, you know <laughs> me. That's the, I've only been as hungry as I've ever been like a thousand times in my life. But uh, so we get. It. Hold on, I'm about to sneeze. Oh, that's great content right there. Woo, man! <laughs> oh, good lord. Um, so. Didn't eat anything all afternoon, right? So we Delta Sky Club. I dumped a couple of drinks from the Delta Sky Club into a tumbler. I brought my backpack, got onto a plane, met this awesome couple from DeKalb County. They're lawyers. Found out their entire life story because they made eye contact with me when I was drinking, and I talked their ear off. Retain their um, services, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, I I know everything about them now. Uh, but so we so we end up going to two dude seafood that night, and um. I don't know if you've ever watched videos of what happens when a bear gets into a trash can, <laughs> but I, th I imagine that's what I look like. I was dude. I, I got two big pieces of fried fish and hush puppies and a, and a, a twice baked potato. And it was just like, ah, cha, 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 I mean, just wood chipping. Yeah. Um. So bad that I so bad that I woke up at 3 a.m. and had to walk to the circle K near the hotel to get some Alka-Seltzer because it was just, I mean, it was hung right here. I had eaten way too fast. Um, I ain't as good as I once was, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Georgia, Florida stories, man. What's your favorite one up from over the years? Was it was it the time you and fellow Mensa member uh... – Patrick Garvin, when we uh, when we got the pedicab over there and we oh, ended up paying like $175 for that thing. That was bad. That was a really bad decision. I wish we hadn't done that. Uh, we we could not. We did not expense that either. We just had to eat that one. Um, uh, you know, actually, we, I, we were when we were talking about doing the show, and we were talking about doing like great stories. For me, my best story is my first ever cocktail uh, experience, which was uh, the 08 game, um, and it was the only time I attended as a student. And it was a, obviously a, it was a terrible game. Anybody who remembers that game knows yeah. I mean, Georgia just got their eyes beat in. What I do remember is the night before, I think it was, I can't remember if it was the same night, but it was the, that weekend was when Michael Crabtree 
uh, beat Texas. Okay. Uh, it was that same weekend. Um, and uh, it was Texas Tech over Texas, Michael Crabtree with that big touchdown. But um, that year, um, I went down as a student for the first time. I'd, I'd never gotten a ticket. I'd applied for tickets a few times, never gotten one. And um, my buddy Robert got a ticket for me. And uh, his parents gave me the ticket and were like, hey, you know, like, you know, want you to go to this, have a great time. We stayed with uh, my stepmom's uncle, uh, this guy, Harry, and uh, had a great time with him. And my, my dad, my stepmom were there. It was just just a blast. I mean, the party obviously always is, but the game was terrible. And But we went to the game and we had these uh, really not, not great seats. We were up in the upper deck and, um, you know, everything was out of hand pretty early in that game. But I turned to Robert and I said, look, you know, I said, I've never been to this game and I don't know when I'll get to come back. I said, I want to sit here and I just want to take it all in. And I said, you know, even if, even if George is getting their ass whipped, I don't, I want to see it. I, and, and I want to take the ass beating to some degree, you know? Um, and so we did. And what ended up happening was there was this, it was like mostly Georgia fans where we were up in this upper bowl. <clears throat> and um, everybody was drunk as, as per the usual. Um, and there was this, but there was this one Florida fan who was sitting up there amongst all the Georgia fans and he was raising hell, man. He was just getting after everybody. Oh man. You know, F you guys, F you get, you know, da, 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 you know, just going on and on and on. And, um, so he, he's, he's like way drunker than anybody in the whole section. And he, at one point he falls and he like he falls he falls from his seat he's standing up and he's yelling and he's raising hell and he falls and he falls into this georgia fan and the georgia fan pushes him like like hey get the hell off me he'd been tired of hearing the guy he'd been sitting by him the whole time and so this drunk florida fan <laughs> um like gets super aggressive and super mad starts yelling at him screaming at this guy and he's and uh and, and like he's like bucking at him bucking at him and this georgia fan just like boom just catches him just i mean out of nowhere just catches him with a right hook hits the guy in the face guy goes back he comes up he starts trying to go for the georgia fan but he's so drunk that the georgia guy just is beating the shit out of him i mean just laying <laughs> hammers just laying hammers on him and so here come the cops cops start running up the cops start running up the thing oh my god oh my god and all the georgia fans uh us included we're, we're like, we were like, we start pointing at the Florida fan and we're like, he did it. It's him. He's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and so they put that guy in handcuffs and, and, and like walked him down the stairs and we're all, everybody's like, yeah, like we had, there, there was nothing for anybody to cheer about that whole game, but that was the like greatest celebration that anybody had that. Y'all got game. my man thrown into the drunk tank. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Just hurt him, dude. I mean, just that guy got, that guy caught a dude or a, a drunk in public that night. It was, it was, that was electric. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, and obviously, I mean, you know, a lot of my best memories about that game and just going down are with you and, and you know, the Brian's Giant subs trips and, yeah. uh, you know, going to uh, the bakery. God, I wish I could think of the name of that bake. Williamson's, I believe is the name. Yeah, of that I believe bakery. so. Yeah, in Dublin, yeah. In Dublin. By the way, if you've never checked these places out in Dublin, you got to check them out. If you have a connected Brian subs, tell them to contact us. We want to. We will exchange ad time for free sandwiches. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll I'll I'll, I'll shout them out any way I can. Um, but um, but no, uh, Brian's Giant Subs, incredible man. I, I just always enjoyed that trip down, and I will I will say too, and you'll you I know you'll remember this one. The uh, that was our Indian Outlaw discussion. That yeah, was absolutely. <laughs> when we got into Tim McGraw's Indian Outlaw and 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 how problematic it, it is. I, we could have written and, a thesis, I think, and how completely that. full of shit the man who wrote that is, you know. <laughs> And and by proxy, Tim McGraw for singing it. Uh, yeah. it just you know, it's it's. I mean, come on. I mean, they're really standing outside just to catch you in your Buffalo briefs. I mean, <laughs> got them standing in line. Who? Who, <laughs> Who? exactly? Who? <laughs> are we talking about big girls here? Yeah, right. right. We're talking about? Are we talking about the the full figured Native American ladies here? I mean, I, okay, all right. I'm with you here. Um, uh, so. You saying about that being your first time got me to thinking about my first time. And I cannot remember if it was 99 or 2000. Um, I, maybe there's somebody in the comments that can kind of get me on this one. But the first time I went with my dad and we go, and man, it's supposed to be 
like it was this past Saturday. It was supposed to be like 88, 90 degrees in Jacksonville, low wind, clear skies, beautiful. We've got kind of upper level seats kind of in the corner of the end zone. And brother, the the bottom comes out about the second quarter and nobody is ready. Like nobody. And I'm t- and we just me and my dad just sitting there, and, you know, we're kind of like we're guys, and um, you know, I probably I, I was wearing some, you know, shorts and a t-shirt or whatever, shorts and whatever. And we're just like, all right, we're just gonna ride it out. Everybody else is scrambling for this, scrambling for that. There were some ponchos in the stadium. Some people came prepared. And I remember there was a uh, a guy that worked concessions or worked cleanup or something. He had the beautiful idea to run to a closet and grab a big box of heavy, heavy-duty trash bags. Oh. And he started handing them bad boys out for 10 bucks a pop. Oh, and my God. It, it, it was gone just like that yeah matthew thank you matthew daniel it's 1999 um it was absolutely i mean i'm talking about i'm talking about a deluge and it didn't rain matthew can can probably attest to this too it didn't rain for like an hour or anything it just rained i mean like just non-stop for 25 to 30 minutes and this dude sold i I guarantee you he sold 100 trash bags for 10 bucks a pop Wow, at, he, at what, the very what, least, what an entrepreneur that guy was. Man. Yeah, super, super great idea. Well, the guy behind me made a hundred dollars because there was a lady that came over, and I can't remember if she's a Georgia, Florida, Georgia, or a Florida fan, but she was the um, she was the embodiment of uh, uh, I know my ain't she cool? That's the kind I dig from a Confederate Railroad. Yeah. She had the big blonde hair. Um, she had on a white t-shirt and I don't think she was a hundred percent man. I mean, uh, made by the Lord himself. I think she had some enhancements and, uh, and she was, she walked over to the guy. She had gold bracelets on big hoop gold earrings and she's told the guy behind me. She smoked Winston lights. Probably, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And she told the guy behind me, she said, I'll give you a hundred dollars for that trash bag. And he said, yes, yes, uh, yes, you can have it. (laughs) It had already had holes cut in it and everything, but that was the first one I went to. And like Matthew Daniel said, that Georgia lost that one. Georgia lost, I want to say, shoot, man, I was there in, I was there in 99, 2000, 2001, and 2002. Georgia lost every single one of them. So they lost the first four I went to. They didn't win one that I went to until 2004. I believe it was, was the first one that I'd ever been to that Georgia had won. They had to kind of squeak that one out. They had just fired, um, they had just fired, uh, uh, Ron Zook going into that game and Florida hung tough. I mean, they hung real tough in that game. Um, and then, you know, I saw Georgia win in 2011. I've been to a lot of Georgia, Florida games. I don't, I don't want to bore everybody by counting them up here on the air, but that game means meant a lot to me growing up and meant a lot to the people that I grew up around because I grew up, you know, a little less than two hours away from Jacksonville. Yeah, you're essentially from Florida. So oh, a lot Jesus of people, for, a lot of, a lot of people don't know that about I don't know you. why you would do this. I don't know why you would go there. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that you're like pretty much a resident. No, let me tell you something. Jacksonville is the biggest town in South Georgia, not the other way around. Okay. This is Jackson. It, it, no. So I got told this the other day that uh, I, I got some family down in the Valdosta area. Lake Park, I think is actually the name of the town uh, or Lake City. I don't know. Lake Park, I think is what it is. Um, but they said that if you want to go do nice shopping, that's where you go. Like you can go to the Target and the Walmart and all that in Valdosta, but if you want to go to the nice stores, you want to go to the high end stuff, you go to Jacksonville. And I assume that's the case for, for Pearson as well. I don't know, man. <laughs> there was a Belk in Douglas. <laughs> that was good enough. That was good enough for me. There's a Belk in Douglas, brother. <laughs> they got they got polo at Belk. Yeah. Oh, no question. Um, no, but yeah, yeah it's it, that game was always it meant a lot to the folks down there. Um, you know, because y- y- we would go, you know, you go do junior senior weekend or um, or a weekend beach trip or whatever, Ferndina all the time, you know, or, or, or St. Augustine and, um, you know, South Georgia just, you know, you, you're, you're probably right. A lot of people do. I, we never school shopped in Jacksonville like ever. Um, Valdosta had a mall and like I said, it had a belt. It had a pennies. What are you talking about? JC pennies, baby. Yeah. I mean, I get my bugle boy at JC Penney's. I know how to yeah. I get my LA gear. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got I got Arizona jeans. I'm fine. One hundred percent. Arizona jeans, dude. I remember when that came in, but yeah, I mean, it's. I hope it doesn't move. I, I, I mean, today I hope it doesn't move. But let me tell you something. And I told somebody this last week. If I walk into a bar next, you know, this Friday, let's say I go out this Friday and I, I won't because I never do. But if I go out this Friday to a bar and I and some guys are having a conversation like, man, you got to keep it in Jacksonville. Ain't no way you can move it out. I'm probably going to play the role of contrarian because I do see the, I, I do see the charm of being like, man, it would be cool to watch those two teams play in Sanford stadium. Now, well, I would ask, I, I don't know this actually about you. I know this for myself. You Have you ever been to Gainesville? I mean, have you ever seen a game there? No, I've never seen a game there. I've been through Gainesville a few times and, yeah, and I mean, there's, so like, there's not much to it. But. I've been everywhere in the East, but, but Gainesville. And yeah. like, I mean, obviously I've got no reason to go otherwise um, other than to go see the, you know Georgia or follow them report on it. So I would be interested for it in that factor. And and I understand the economic, you know, like bring it home. It'll give, you know, Georgia another weekend in Athens and it'll be good for the businesses. And even Kirby Smart's pitch of the recruiting. I get that. I mean, to me, all it makes sense all the way. So at the end of the day, all it comes down to, in my opinion, is just how you feel in your heart about it, man. And, and you know, and, and at the end of the day, I think the economics will keep it there personally. But, and I think maybe one day they, you know, they may bring Matt Luke in to do the, uh, to do the vote for whether they can keep it down there or not. And with every head bowed and every eyes closed, <laughs> yes, I see you. I see you over there. Um, <laughs> Uncle Glenn Hartley asked if Palmer was the designated driver this past weekend. Actually, no. Uh, Connor Riley of Dog Nation represent. Uh, he did a phenomenal job. Got us to and fro. I even drunk his vitamin water. Um, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Become a little bit of a become a little bit of a conquistador, I believe. Whenever I'm sure, <laughs> just kind of take what's mine. Yeah, sure. um, <laughs> Manifest destiny is your yeah. your mode of operandi. A modus operandi. There. Just really wish I would have gotten some Alka Seltzer before I went back to the hotel. It could have saved me a good a, a, a couple of hours. Um, not you know, I don't know, man. It, I, I'll tell you this: it, the this whole I saw that projection of like. They're, they're talking to Orlando or they're talking to Tampa. Orlando sucks, man. Orlando is a is not a good town. If you want to take your kids to Disney World or Universal Studios. Sucks, but yeah, whatever. but I mean, like, that, like if those were, the, to me, those are the only reasons to go to, to Orlando. Orlando is not, a, a, the hotels are gross um, for because of that reason. They get, you know, people, families come get through. Get a lot of heat. Yeah, but Tampa, figuratively Tampa and would, literally. If you Tampa think would be kind of cool, I think. Um, but I mean, I don't know. And to me, Atlanta is not a good atmosphere for that either. Um, you know, no, Jack it's not. Let me tell you something right now. The world's largest outdoor cocktail party for the one year that it would spend in Atlanta will absolutely fizzle and die. Yeah, it is. It's not going to be. It's not going to be cool. It's not going to be hip. It's not going to be the fun thing to do. It's just going to die for that year. That's yeah, all you're going to do for it. Sure, sure. I mean, I mean for whatever, I, Jacksonville, for what for all the problems that people have with Jacksonville, and I get that a lot of people have problems. Oh, have it at the Speedway in Daytona. Oh, dude, Atlanta Motor Speedway would be sick. Let's see if we could – let's see. Try to do it those places and see if you can get 250,000 people to go. Oh, my God. Famous J1 over here. That's – now that – that's thinking on – Dude, you know what you should do? Let's make, make it, make it co coincide it with Bike Week. Oh, oh, man. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. We are big ideas guys tonight, okay? Here's what you do. You do Atlanta Motor Speedway in Daytona. You bring the seats in. You condense everything. You fill them – you let everybody come that wants to come for five dollars, right? Just five bucks a piece, and then you just you sell everything you can possibly sell while you're there. Memorabilia, body, uh, uh, you know, you know, is going to be here. here. That's marijuana, <laughs> um, you know, you could, you know, pills, you know. I mean, we make this, we make this a, uh, it's a, we make it an enclave state. Yeah, <laughs> we are not beholden to the laws of America in right. this area. Hamsterdam, like in The Wire, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just, you know, black tar heroin. It's all in. <laughs> Colombian bam bam. No, hey. no, but seriously, like you just you you make it you make it a concessions deal 
with all of the, you know, sell beer, sell everything. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I, this may be the worst idea ever because it may be the start of the apocalypse. <laughs> but you just you fill every seat that you can possibly see see within distance within you know. I oh man, that'd be so much fun. I I really love. Listen, if if that happens, we we get residuals on that. Yeah, like, we came. You know that you heard it here first because Atlanta Motor Speedway or Daytona would be absolutely sick only but here's the deal and I know that <laughs> I'm imagining it like this it can't happen because of the the grade of the banks on those uh on the on the tracks but let the moms walk around the track <laughs> so you can't go yeah, yeah. have little kids throwing footballs like <laughs> <laughs> absolutely have every have every cheer squad in each state just just on the tracks throwing uh, throwing balls into the stands and the kids over there playing throw them up bust them up. Tell me that wouldn't be great. Oh man, it'd be it would be so fun. It really would. No. Somebody no. die on that track. I mean, you just like walking up a wall. Yes. So famous um, J one, we're cutting you in. You, it's your idea. You want to cut? I get it. That was that's a great idea. That's that's the first time I've ever heard that. What mention. we'll do, famous J, what we'll do is we'll see if we can negotiate ten percent. We'll give you five, and then we'll take two and a half of it. Because they, I mean, what they did we that, ain't great. that was what um what they played that at uh they did the Virginia Tech Tennessee game at the yeah, track, but they right? did it at Bristol, and it's so much smaller than either one of those venues. It's so um, Bristol is such a smaller track than Atlanta Motor Speedway and definitely Daytona. I mean, Daytona, I think the day, I think Daytona Motor Speedway is two and a half miles yeah. around. Yeah. So, I mean, hell, I think you could probably fit a hundred thousand people right. in a football game on the infield. But make, but you make, make it a spectacle that no one has ever seen before. And you say, look, we're bringing in, like you said, we're going to bring in 150,000 people to watch a football game, set a record, Man, the publicity for both Georgia and Florida. And tell them to go, hey, let's split it 50-50. You know, nobody's in charge this year. Handle duties, whatever. I think that's a great idea. I I love that. Yeah, and the thing is, is like, if you did Daytona Speedway, it's 101500 But if you, if you then took and you fashioned those, made those stands what they are, but then surrounded whatever would be the football field with more. I think you could, I think you might could get to 150, 200,000 um, kind of set it. Like you said, make it a, make it a spectacle and you could do it both places one yeah. year, one year, one year, the next. And, uh, and, and that would be pretty cool. I'm he sorry for that. anybody that chimed in tonight thinking that, you know, we're going to get some information out of us. <laughs> I think they'll know us better than to know that we really, this is kind of, this is, this is us time. Um, this, <laughs> this, is, this is Jake Rowe and I hang out once a week and it's on this podcast. <laughs> yes, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do. Cotton meth candy, famous Jay said. Here, hey, we got to cut you in on that too. So yeah, he said he says he wants he says he wants thirty he wants thirty percent. We all get thirty percent. I'm cool with that, famous Jay. I'm with that. Um, man, that's a I I don't know, man. I've not heard that proposed. That's a cool idea. It is. It is um, a very, very right. cool idea. You so want to get we, some yeah. of these questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got a few questions tonight. Uh, I know over in the comments, we got a few questions over from the board as well, over at uh, Dogs HQ, the Dog Walk board. Um, and, and listen, listen, we need to commit on the front end of this. I, you know, blood in, blood in. You know, you know, cut ourselves and blood brother stuff. Um, uh, we we got to run through these because if we get hung up on one, we're gonna we may be here till you know three in the morning. Sure. Oh, all right. Um, all right. Um, so let's see here. Um, <laughs> famous J says 5% on the math. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ro, where do you want to start it, man? Uh, well, you start with that one that uh, that applies to you and not me at all. What, the first date story? About the redneck and hillbilly. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that one from Ryan Jordan. He wants to know... Where is the redneck slash hillbilly dividing line in North Georgia? Uh, I want to go ahead and say there's no such thing as a hillbilly where I'm from. Yeah, no, sure, sure. You would require hills um, in order to do that. Um, but uh, so that's a really interesting question up in up in here um, because Blue Ridge has become like a, a metro area of Atlanta. I mean, we're like uh, we're like the next resort town up from. Uh, Atlanta. So carpet baggers everywhere. 
oh, there's just floods of them every weekend. Um, uh, most of the week, really. Uh, one of my favorite jokes when I meet somebody from Florida, I'm like, hey, where are you from? I'm from Florida. I said, man, that's crazy. I never meet anybody from Florida here. And some of them, some of them will be like, really? And then, <laughs> and, uh, and then like, I, they say like, you know, they're like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from here. And nobody's from here, which is a, a weird thing. So I would say just outside of the Blue Ridge areas where you're going to run into your hillbillies and rednecks, where I am, where I live, where I like to be. Um, th those are my people. So uh, the McKaysville, Copper Hill area, it's coming up. We're changing the the idea here. We, we It's getting a lot nicer. We've got a lot of those spillover from uh, Blue Ridge as well. Um, you know, Canton, it starts to uh, switch over a little bit. Zachary Kane mentioned that over there. Um, it gets a little more woodsy. You might run into a little bit of that up there. But uh, Alan Coleman correctly says squid billies are from LJ. That is correct. Uh, the squid billies are from LJ. Um, you know, it's it's weird up here, man. Because dogs as hell, don't they? Tons of tons of we, we. It's just two like different worlds. There's like two people that live in different different realities up here. There's second home people. There's vacation people, and there's full time people. And there's just not a lot of the full time people. They they don't have number the the second home people. So I would say that Canton area is where it kind of starts getting woodsy. Jasper is probably a little, oddly enough, Jasper is kind of a little bit more like behind the times than, than some of them. Um, LJ is pretty nice. Um, Blue Ridge is nice. Uh, Blairsville is a cool little town. You get into Hiawassee. That's a nice place too. Uh, small, but nice. Um, uh, Brant, uh, Brant Barber says Enola in Blue Ridge was very cool. My sister got married there. So um, it is a nice spot. But anyway, regardless Canton, kind of the dividing line, not the dividing line it used to be. When I was a kid, dude, Canton was where you went. That They had a belk. <laughs> they had a belk in Canton. So, uh, I, yeah. Hey, listen, I need to get to this question by my man Randy Payne before he gets cycled off. 30, 40,000 seats getting cut in Jacksonville. I don't think that's permanent. I think that's for the short term while they do some renovations. Um, and then the seats are going to come back. But I think during the renovations, one of the reasons they're thinking about moving it is because they're going to lose that many seats in the interim, and that's why they're going to move the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So what's up next here? Um, yeah, let's look. Let's look. I, I probably should have been a little bit more proactive. Uh, worst first date stories, I'll go first. Yeah. Um, they're not going to mention any names. Uh, beautiful, beautiful young lady. I took her out whenever I was 17. She was 16. Um wasn't a whole lot to it, man. Uh, she just didn't say a word. I didn't really say a word. She was way too good looking to be going out with me to begin with. And uh, I took her home. But the worst part about the whole thing is it had just come like – this is a South Georgia thing, but it had just become like a torrential downpour for like two straight days. Did you charge her $10 for a trash bag? <laughs> I did not know. But uh, I had an S10 – all right, and and listen, I, I talk about this S10 fondly. I had a Chevrolet S10 step side uh, with a 4.3 engine in it. It was a regular Catwheel deal. That thing was bad as hell. Okay, it was it would outrun the word of God, and especially during the summertime when I could get my tires to stick to the pavement, I could wear people out in the quarter marks. Uh, Winter time gets a little slick out there. I couldn't hardly keep the back tires on the ground. I'd wear them out. But I had an S10. And she had only lived about, I don't know, probably a mile and a half from me, but it was all dirt roads to get there. And there was a low lying area between me and her. And I had washed my truck. I was trying to look everything nice. Um, and there had a, a, a truck of a, a, a dump truck that was hauling a bunch of chicken feces through there had gotten bogged down and had turned over on its side. And there was chicken shat and there was mud and everything else in the, in the low lying area there. And uh, I hit it going about 35, 40 miles an hour. Cause I knew that's what it was going to take to get through there. And dude, there was, there was chicken fecal matter all over everything on the outside of that truck. It yeah. stunk to high heaven, took her out. We didn't say much. I don't know. Maybe she didn't want to open her mouth or her nose because she was scared <laughs> to breathe it in or whatever. But uh, I do remember uh, taking her home about two hours early and then going right back out going to clean my truck off again at the, at the wand car wash. And uh, what made the date the worst, though, is about 10 minutes before I was supposed to go home and go home for curfew, 
uh, I get a knock on my window over at the old shell station as I pop back in and get ready to ride back and forth between the red lights and Pearson. Um, it was her. She had come back out and she was like, what are you doing? Oh, oh boy. Yeah. yeah. I'll never forget that face. It was like, you know, and I was like, well, I, you know, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> funny thing was we had to i mean we we saw each other in every class the next the next oh. monday you know oh, boy. That, that's dude that was the small town i graduated with a high from high school in a class of 66 and yeah. you didn't get away from anybody like you didn't i mean if, if you had some beef on the weekends i mean you were gonna you were gonna be within touching distance of that person the next you know that next week at school uh-huh. so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep mine short and sweet, but I remember it very vividly. It's it's like my it's like my hotel story. Uh, I picked up this girl uh, at All Good one night. Uh, I knew her. I, we we had crossed paths, like we were familiar with each other. Uh, but we were I ran into each other at All Good one night. Uh, hey, why don't you come back to my place? She did. We didn't hook up or anything. Nothing weird happened. Uh, but she stayed, and um, <laughs> so I woke up the <laughs> I woke up the next morning. And I turned over to where I thought she would be. She was gone. Uh, but in her place was a uh, big wet spot in the bed. She had pissed the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, boy, that was a lot to take in when you were a little hungover. And, and uh, you know, that was just made for a tough day the next day. I will say. Yeah, that's rough. That's yeah. rough. <laughs> Did not appreciate it. Uh, next one, most overrated and underrated recruit you have ever covered. I'm going to say overrated, and I overrated him as much as anybody. Corey Rogers, Buford linebacker that ended up at Clemson. Man, I thought the world of that kid. I thought he was one of the best high school players that I had ever watched in person. Saw him several times, and he just didn't get it done at the next level. I thought it was a massive miss by Georgia, um, but he is probably the most overrated I ever I ever covered. Uh, that's a tough one for me, man. Um, I uh, I don't know. Like, like Cam Akers was amazing. Like Cam Akers was a really good player. But I argued for I argued with everybody who would listen that I thought DeAndre Swift was the better player, and nobody would listen to me on that. Najee Harris was in that class too, and I thought and I thought DeAndre was on that level too. And I think in college that ended up kind of being proven somewhat. I mean, they were they were comparable i would say um but but cam's not a bad player and i i don't mean to say that i just i just thought that deandre should have been a, a higher ranked player personally yeah that makes sense what about underrated anybody kind of ever strike you as as an underrated guy um geez uh we didn't get to see the, his full potential uh unfortunately but like jeremiah holloman was a guy i beat the drum for for a long time um he especially like when he first committed to michigan he was a he was a three-star guy and and uh, i really um i i really liked his game a lot um obviously it didn't work out for for many reasons um stetson bennett is a good one matthew c says i did cover stetson bennett in high school and everybody knew stetson bennett was a great player man i mean like we knew that watching him in practice he was a tremendous guy um Oh gosh, uh, Matthew C brought up Ray Drew as being an overrated guy. I agree to an extent. Ray Drew had a forty-three tackle, eleven quarterback hurry, eight tackles for a loss, and six sacks one season. So he put together a really good season. He was being banged up the next year, but um, yeah, he. I mean, clearly there was you know unless you meet some really high standards there, he was going to be overrated. But yeah. Um, David Andrews is a great one, Alan Coleman. I, I totally, I would totally agree with that one. Um, and these next two, Matthew C. and and Famous J. here say Tate Crowder and Lad McConkey. The reason that I wouldn't say either of those guys is because I didn't cover either of those guys. No one knew who those guys were. Yeah. They just like fell out of the sky one day. Like all yeah. of a sudden, people are like, "Hey, you need to look at Lad McConkey. You need to look at Lad McConkey." Uh, Tate Crowder. I, I think you were at my house when that happened. I did, and we, yeah. and we were, and we were like, "Who the hell is Tate Crowder?" Yeah, hundred percent. So, I mean, it wasn't; those were not guys I covered. So it's it's unfair for me to say that I felt like they were over or underrated because I didn't even know that they existed. I'll tell you, a very very highly rated but underrated guy is probably Jalen Carter. Um, he was a five star eventually in like a composite type yeah. situation, but looking back, he probably should have been a top five player in the country. Sure. In yeah. whatever class he was in, so you yeah. know that's a. I guess one that'd be guys, an example. One of the guys that I was really surprised didn't have a better career, and I don't know. I'm not saying overrated, underrated, whatever. Um, but 
uh, one of the guys I was really shocked by was Julian Rochester. I thought Julian was going to be. Yeah, good. just uh, eating up with, with Andrews. Trent yeah. Thompson, too. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I'll never cool. call Trent Thompson overrated. That's what I'm saying. Because like, Trent Thompson's body broke down on him. I mean, when he was when he was going, when he was playing and playing well and healthy, he was an absolute stud. Yeah. It just his body just didn't hold up on him, and and that that was that's unfortunate. Yeah, and that and that's that's what's hard with some of these guys, man. It's like to, a lot of people view these guys as overrated, and the things that end up happening to them have nothing to do with their skill level or their ability. It's it's their body gives out on them sometimes. I mean, that's it sucks like that sometimes. All right, college football committee one through six. If it was me doing this, okay, if this was me doing this. I would say Michigan 1, Ohio State 2. I would go Washington 3, Florida State 4, Georgia 5, and Oregon 6. Are you being serious? Or are you just yeah, I, yeah I would. I would absolutely do that because okay. it's all going to work itself out. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately I'd put Georgia 5. I mean, it, and listen, I don't think Georgia is there, but if you want to start looking at resume. Sure. Um, you know, because I, I feel like I feel like I can – I'm in a position where I can be a little kennel blind as far as Georgia goes because I can look at a lot of the good that Georgia has going on and understand the team and understand that it plays with its food a little bit and understand how the injuries have impacted that team. But if I'm a college football playoff selection committee member to kind of sit there and be like, all right, what would I do with Georgia? I'd put Georgia four or five. Um, I don't necessarily think they're going to do that, but I bet – I bet Georgia would love – or Kirby Smart would love for them to do that. I don't think that's an unfair rating at all. I think that that makes sense probably with what I think too. I Matthew probably- sees an FSU homer. He tried to get on my case about FSU earlier this year. What an FSU homer. I would say uh, – I would put uh, I would put Connor Stallions in the top four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think that's fair right now as it stands, man. To me, that makes sense. Um Georgia, like you said, it's going to sort itself out, so it won't really matter. Um, Georgia, though, has probably played, I don't know, uh, they're, they're probably in in that area. Washington, I, I think, is a really cool team to watch right now. I think that they are doing some really interesting things. They're playing better defense than a lot of people think in the Pac-12. They've got an incredible offensive attack. Um, they so, just had some fights on their hands, you yeah, know, they, very, very similar to Georgia, but they've won them. And then that's, yeah. you know, and they responded in a really good way. So, um, Washington's a cool and, and listen, I'm I, the, apropos of nothing. I said this on the board the other day, Georgia tech has suddenly turned into a really fun program to follow this season. I, that is, which I did not expect to see, but to, to, to be spoilers in the way that they have, uh, I've, I, good for them, man. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't have any high expectations for them, but it's been neat to watch. Nah, Matthew C's over here gassing up Florida State. They needed a starting quarterback to get hurt to beat Duke, and they needed Clemson just to hand them a game. But yeah. otherwise, they're they're great. Yeah. Uh, I listen. I put them third. I, I would put them third, and I'd put Washington fourth, or or vice versa. I can't remember which way, but I think Washington is pretty good too. I'm really interested to see what Washington would do against a team that could. Um, that could match up like really well with them in well, the trenches. Like Matthew C makes the point here. Remember, Matt, uh, MG says, "Do you think Washington, who struggled to score 15 points versus a crappy Arizona State, is better than UGA? I have oceanfront property in Kansas to sell." Matthew C says, "It's about wins and not bad losses. Beating Oregon was huge. I, I would agree with that, man. That's a, that was a really solid win for Washington. Yeah, absolutely huge. And, and I don't. And I don't. I'm not saying that." I'm not saying I, I would absolutely bet on Georgia to beat Washington if they matched up tomorrow, but I'm just saying from the perspective, of I can the, listen. I love my man, Matthew C loyal, loyal man. He would not have that same energy. If Georgia had beaten Arizona state scored 14 points. <laughs> um, Alan he'd, he'd have a he'd have a truckload of feathers and a bucket full of tar ready for Mike Bobo. Alan Coleman. Would Washington be another TCU? I don't think so. I, I really don't. No, no, no. They're, I think they're better than TCU. And I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't think I think TCU just played its worst ball that night. Um, sure. You know, but you know, yeah. That's just um, that's just where we're at. Where are we at? What we got next? Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Georgia okay. finished with the number one class. I think so. Yeah, I, that seems likely to me um, because they're going to continue to add to it and. Um, I just, I don't see anybody necessarily unseating them. Um, 
And as far as big fish, Nasir Johnson, I still think Georgia's got something up its sleeve. Uh, and, you know, maybe we can talk about this a little bit later on in the week over at the site because, I mean, obviously we're not coming off the the the, the primo info here on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, I, I think, you know, Georgia we're quite, might be. Yeah, we're quite, quite the opposite on the YouTube channel tonight. <laughs> Might still be in it for some big time guys. We'll see. Um, all right, let's uh, let's wrap this up with this one. Matthew C's asked this one a couple of times. We'll, let, we'll we'll pair this list down though. He says top five WWF Attitude Era wrestlers. Let's just go. Let's just go like in that era, man. Like you know, let's go ninety five to oh five. Your top ten guys, man. Um, my favorites. Sure. Okay, Sting will always Sting and Ultimate Warrior will always be my favorite two wrestlers. Did you see Sting's retiring? Uh, I didn't know he was still wrestling. <laughs> Sting is like sixty five years old. Now. I just remember <laughs> in those days, you know the 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 Scorpion Death Lock, the Stinger Splash, um, you know Ultimate Warrior, and that whole persona were just tremendous. So those two would always be my favorite. Um, Big Shawn Michaels guy. Um, mm. Thought you know his athleticism and what he brought to to the ring was just outrageous. Ric Flair, um, definitely in hindsight, didn't love him in real time as much as I do now. Um, in real time, it was like boo, you know, you know. Um, Greatest heel ever, in my Lex Luger. Wow, that's an outside the box. Lex Luger, Lex Luger. Lex Luger. Lex, Lex Luger. Oh man, love Lex Luger, dude. Lex um, Luger. All right, so that, that was your five. Um, I would go <coughs> – I'm a huge Macho Man guy. I was much a much earlier Macho Man guy, late 80s, early 90s Macho Man was primo. Macho, macho Man Randy Savage. Macho Man just had the most he, – dude, he had the charisma. He had the cocaine-fueled energy. He was just like – just an unchained person. And when I watched that, I was like, dude, that's what it's all dude, about. Dude, when he, when he asked Elizabeth to marry him, like – Elizabeth, <laughs> will you marry me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so great. Um, Macho Man for sure. Ric Flair, absolutely. Above. Yeah, mankind over here. <laughs> oh, great choice, dude. The hardcore legend, Mick Foley. Um, Ric Flair definitely among mine. Uh, the greatest heel of all time, in my opinion. I would say uh, I was a huge, even as a kid, and I don't know why, but I was. I just loved his attitude. I was kind of into the like the bad guys who were cool. So like, I loved Kurt Henning. I loved Mr. Perfect. Um, yeah. And yeah I, Mr. Thought Perfect cool, fun. I thought that was a cool persona, man. Um, and uh, I was huge into the outsiders. So Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, man, yeah. just oozing machismo, you know, just, I uh, just, those guys, when they came into WCW and they crashed the party, that was like, Oh man, it's it set the world on fire. I was enamored with it. I thought it was, the and they were just so great as Razor Ramon and, and uh, Diesel. Yeah, too. no, they were cool before, and then they got to just be themselves, and they were just the same people. And they were, yeah. Cool. So, and um, you know, I was, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, just reeling some off though, like uh, British Bulldog, Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed all Johnson, the pump handle love. slam was a devastating. Yeah, one. Pearl Farouk. River Plunge. I was a big Farouk guy. Yeah, um, Farouk I love. Uh, Baruch, Ming. We've talked about Ming before and how Ming is like genuinely the guy they're like, listen, you don't want to piss this guy. Ming, Ming was incredibly badass. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I was into all that weird stuff. Uh, you know, the the goofy stuff was fun. I mean, the Steiner brothers were great. They were just great technical wrestlers. Uh, I was into that too. Yeah, you got Matthew C Matthew down here self high fine. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. It took it, it like blew my mind when somebody pointed out that he used um the uh um uh, Smells like Teen Spirit intro for uh, for his his music. Oh Don't, you did, uh, yeah, I, I, I have known that. Like that's oh. you know you want to you want to talk about something a total role, role reversal. That was always that would be something you would tell me about normally. Yeah, and I'd be like yeah yeah, but no that that's okay. Yeah, yeah, and I, I definitely picked that up. It was it was not long after um, he was, but yeah, that was that was always pretty cool. And he, uh, what about when he was – so wasn't there a time when Diamond Dallas Page – wasn't Diamond Dallas Page's – whose manager was he for? He was either he was either Kevin Nash's manager as – no, I think he was Razor Ramon's manager as the Diamond Stud. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And a guy we haven't brought up, and one of my favorite storylines from back in the day, was uh, uh, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and Virgil. 
Yeah. Sure. Um, and and their their split and how. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I saw it the other day. I saw it a few weeks ago at the barber shop, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the worst acting I've ever seen." Yes. Oh, no, how did I not pick up on this as a kid? Sure. I, I thought, and also to a guy who was who was like not as big at the time, but like Papa Shango, dude, I was legitimately afraid of Papa Shango. Papa Shango. He was. Uh, he was uh, bald. He turned, he, he turned into comma. He had, yeah, um, he, yeah, had the, a, he had a skull on his face. Kind of the bald African American dude with the face paint on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. He was, like, he was the voodoo doctor. Yeah. Oh man, that guy was scary as hell, dude. That, that <laughs> freaked me out, man. I did not like that. I, the, uh, do you remember the natural disasters? Yeah, yeah. Typhoon and uh an earthquake. Earthquake, man, yeah. yeah. The time the earthquake uh did the earthquake thing on Jake the Snake's Python and yeah, and he killed supposedly it. Supposedly killed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. John Tinta, his name. Uh earthquakes, man um he was uh they they said i i read I, we'll get off this god this this is where we fail every time we do this uh but they said i read a thing the other day that said he hated he he was big so he was always a heel like he was a monster they always like made him a scary guy but like he hated that he like wanted to be loved he wanted he like he liked little kids to think he was cool and he liked you know i don't know it was fun yeah uh, yeah for sure Oh, X Pac, great mention over there too. One of my yeah. favorite. I, I had an NWO. I had an NWO six shirt, and it had yeah. a big six ball on the back. Uh, I was. He was really an like, athlete, man. I mean, he's one. He was one of those like legit big time athletes. He was, like, he was like one of the great cruiserweights and one of the real guys who really started that division. Um, sure. All right. All right. We've got. All right. Well, listen, <laughs> we're, we're 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 not gonna Jake. We're not gonna Jake off. We're not gonna do Jake on Jake. We're gonna get out of here because we're fifty two minutes and we were talking about doing a short show tonight. Yeah. Uh, but listen, we appreciate everybody doing here. Call your mothers tomorrow. Call your fathers tomorrow. I know it's not Mother's Day or Father's Day. It's Halloween, but just do it because it's awesome. Talked to my mom today, and I was like, man, I got to do this more often because yeah. I get too busy and don't do it as much as I should. So I'm just reminding you all to do it tomorrow if they if you still got them. Call your family, tell you you love them, and uh, we will uh, we'll be back with you next Monday with something we don't know. We figured this out on the fly, and I think we did all right with job. But uh, we will uh, we'll see you soon. Y'all take care.